and welcome to the second video of the Altera Monitor program um, or the Intel uh, Monitor program. In this video I will go over the memory content inspection, the uh, reg register um, content inspection, um, and some of the uh, things that can, you can do in this GUI. Um, so to get st things started I have a small program um, that's basically um, going to read a um, a small string of characters and it's going to change it to uh, from uppercase to lowercase. If you're um, unfamiliar with this uh, syntax of the ARM architecture or the ARM instruction set architecture, um, it's okay. Um, I'll try to explain what the instructions are doing as we go along, uh, but the point of this lecture is actually to see how the memory content is being changed as we go through the instructions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compile and download this program to the board. It's going to take a minute. Okay, and I'm going to step through it and we're going to see the content um, in the memory. Uh, a few things to know here is that um, usually there is one main window that has multiple tabs. So in this one there's the editor, there's the the assembly, which will show you um, the equivalent of the instruction and the hex value of that instruction at and the address at which at which the instruction is being stored at. Um, breakpoints, if you have any breakpoints, you can put them in the breakpoints window, um, a trace tab, and usually the memory um, is also part of the tabs. Um, I don't know if I can put it back down there, but you can put it as a tab in, in this min window, or you can drag it and make it uh, uh, in its own, uh, its own window. Uh, here we go. I just got it. See, so the memory previously in my window was uh, one of these tabs, and what I like to do is I like to open the registers on the right, and then the memory. I'd like to open the memory, so I have my own memory window here, and then the editor on the left side. So that way I can look at the instruction as we, as I step through it. I see the content of the memory as I am executing the program, and then the content of the registers on the right hand side. Um, all of these windows, like I said, can be basically just tabs in one main window, um, but I like to break them down into uh, a few smaller windows um, so I can see the, the content being changed. So let's take a look at uh, the register values here. Um, so do you have the, uh, the registers in the ARM uh, Cortex-A9 processor? And these are the content. They are in hex. Um, usually, you have the program counter, uh, which was referring to the um, address of the first instruction to be executed, and you have uh, R0 to R12. These are general registers, um, and this is the content of these registers. And then you have the stack pointer, the link register, and the status register at the end. Um, if you right-click on those um, values, you can actually change the uh, display from uh, hexadecimal to decimal, octal, or binary. Um, binary could be a little bit too overwhelming because you need to basically uh, evaluate 32 bits to understand what the instruction value is. Um, it could be helpful for the for the status register. Uh, the CPSR is the current program status status register. Um, if you don't know what this register does right now, that's okay. Again, um, this is uh, this video is to show you how to read the data um, uh, primarily. So uh, um, sometimes it's helpful to read the uh, this register, to read the value of this register in binary, because certain bits in this register will have certain implications on how the program is being executed. Um, again, another way to do this is to display this in decimal. Um, this could be helpful if you're trying to track down a counter and instead of uh, counting in hex uh, you want to see if the counter for example reaches the value of let's say 100 then um, it would be helpful to display the values in decimal okay so I'm going to go back to hexadecimal um, another thing you can do is you can actually overwrite um, the values in these registers so if you double click um, you can actually insert any value that you want um, in this case, let's just move, uh, uh, change this value from uh, FF to BB. And now the content of register R0 is uh, FF, 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 BB. Um, 
so that's about it for the registers and uh, the same thing actually um, is applicable to memory content so if you look at the memory contents um, here you have the address of memory so this is address 0 and it goes all the way down um, and this is the first word at address so this word is at address 0 this is at address 4 this is at address 8 and this is at address 12 let's see if they can make it a little bit bigger yeah so 0x uh, so basically this means the way you read this is that you're at address 0 plus 0 offset so that's the word that's stored at address 0 and the second word is basically stored at address 0 plus 4 offset so this is the word at address 4 and this is the word at address 8 and this is the word at address C if you prefer a different layout of the memory content you can um, select uh, that um, from here um, so you can uh, <coughs> select the uh, so you can select the uh, um, number of words per line so in this case we have four words per line but you can have one word per line so basically now the address goes from 0 to 4, 8, 12, uh, C is 12, uh, 16, etc. Um, you can also, I'm going to go back to uh, 4 words per line. So now I have uh, basically 4 addresses per line. Um, this architecture specifically is for um, word aligned data. So um, each address will hold a word of, um, each instruction is one word, it's 32 bits. So each address here is one word. You can also view the content of the memory um, like either as bytes so now um, the content of this location is grouped in terms of bytes so you have one byte two bytes three four bytes altogether you can view them as half a word okay so like a, a 16 bit um, and then followed by 16 bits or you can view them as a complete word Okay. Um, you can also, f instead of viewing them as hex, you can view those numbers as um, <coughs> you can view them as decimal, binary, etc. So, like in decimal, that value is 38, 52, 40, etc. Um, there's also another way to uh, see. Let's go back to hex. Okay, so let's step through the program and see how the memory content and the register content is going to change. Okay, so if I step through the program, um, R0 is pointing to the address of ALF or the alphabet. So R0 is pointing to address 40. Apparently that's where the uh, message is being stored. So if I go to address 40 in memory, which is right here, I should see the um, alphabet as I store them so which is true so uh, if you take a look at this one uh, 41 is the hex value of a capital letter A 42 is B 43 is C and 44 is D now if you look at the adjacent window in the memory content you'll see that I have the ASCII displayed here as A B C D followed by E F G H etc so um, so this my message is basically stored starting at address 40 so address 40 right here uh, is pointed you know R, R0 is pointing to this memory location and this memory location contains my message a b c d e f g h i j k l now I'm going to uh, load one byte uh, from that location into R1 and now my R1 is going to contain the value of a so R1 is going to contain the value of 41, which is the hex value of letter capital letter A. Um, you notice that every time I uh, every time I step through the program, if the content of the um, register is changed, um, the program display that in red, so you know something has been updated there. Um, I'm gonna step a little bit through those uh, until I get to the write back so I'm going to uh, basically I'm converting the uppercase a to lowercase a 
and I'm going to write it back into the the memory location so now since that memory location also has been updated it is now being displayed in red and if you know if you note here uh, if you notice that uh, the capital letter A has been um, replaced with a lowercase a um, so that's the ASCII, you know, 461 is the ASCII value of um, lowercase a. Uh, then basically the program is going to repeat until the um, the string has been fully converted from an uppercase to a lowercase. So instead of stepping through it one at a time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a, a breakpoint. Um, you can place a breakpoint by clicking next to the instruction on the left. And I'm going to let the program run for a minute. And then it got to the breakpoint and now it stopped. And um, I want to inspect the content of the memory um, <coughs> of uh, at this address. So I see like it's 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, etc. So which corresponds to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L um, in lowercase. Um, so in this uh, um, program, uh, also the status of the uh, the status register of the, the the current program status register has been updated, and that's why it's in red. Um, we'll talk about uh, the CBSR in another uh, video lecture. Um, but for now, uh, I hope that you, uh, you 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 were able to follow how um, you can uh, debug or uh, trace rather uh, the memory content and the register content while executing a program uh, in assembly. Uh, and finally, if you want to disconnect the program, you basically click on this button, and then this will break from, from the board. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.